Hello guys, welcome back to my channel! We're in the car, there's a microphone in my headband, you know what that means, we're training. It's a training day. Uh, this is a leg day at ten and a half weeks out, ten weeks out on Saturday. Today being Wednesday, it is Wednesday my dudes! I am slightly over caffeinated, slightly underfed, but it's fine. I'm also mm, crunch for time, but that is, <laughs> that's just how I live. Here's the sitch, running a little late this morning, Inhaled my breakfast, ate two, count them one, two, chocolate rice cakes on the way to the gym, and then I've got some Country Time Lemonade. I got me some Country Time Lemonade in here for 25 grams of carbs, as well as my Buff Chick Icy Blue Raz Creatine. So it's like the great value brand Alex Tack, except minus the pre-workout. Can we talk about what a sleigh that is that I got to put a stack together with Buff Chick? Um, I, I will say, I was reflecting upon that on my way here to the gym. Um, so, the Alex stack, which is now out of stock. Thank you so much to everybody who purchased. If you purchase, let me know down in the comments below. Because I would like to personally thank you and give you a big forehead kiss. Um, so, what happened is, it launched at the end of September. In the middle of September, I was down in Texas doing the photo shoot and promo for the launch. Simultaneously, my divorce was getting uglier and uglier. So I was actually in the hotel room one night after the photo shoot when I got a message from some dude. Anyway, I'll spare you the details. It was gross. I'm so glad that the marriage is over. Anyway, that totally ruined the experience for me. Um, it was highly distracting. It was a very difficult time of life. Um, and simultaneously, like, such a, such a high, you know? Ah, the dichotomy. Well, here I've been yapping for three minutes already, and I didn't even introduce myself. If you're new here, howdy, partner. My name's Alex. I'm a bodybuilder. <laughs> Cocky as fuck, everything by me popping, got face, I got body, you name it, I got it. Cocky as fuck, I hustle, I get it, I get it, I get it. I'm sure you picked up. Today's a leg day, and we're crunched for time. All right, let's get after it. Once again, we're finding ourselves hoping I can extract background audio and not get copyright striked. <laughs> we are going to fast track this warm up. I do think generally that people overthink warm ups, this being the worst angle ever. For me, I just like to kind of like roll out the crunchy bits a little bit, always my lats. Turns out my low back's a little tight too. I talked about this briefly in my full day of eating, but oftentimes low back pain isn't actually in the low back. Sometimes it can be from either tight glutes or if you tend to sit a lot, it can also be from stretched out glutes. So get that fixed. I already know that my legs always hold the most inflammation after leg day. They just really do the most always, all the time. So I like to give them a good foam roll as well. Although I was on the stair supper this morning and everything felt good. So I don't think they need too terribly much. Okay, this is one of my favorite squat day warmups of all time. So I get about into what my squat stance would be. Hands overhead, I push back like an RDL, hold the toes and maintaining like spinal neutrality from the top of the head down to the tailbone, get into the squat position. Hands go back overhead and then squat up. This for me tends to really illuminate anything that might be feeling crunchy or stiff, whether it's an ankle, a knee, if one of my hips is tighter than the other, it gets a little blood flow to my actual quads. It kind of, I hate to use the word prime, but it sort of primes the core for bracing. So I just take this time to assess what might need a little extra love. I can feel that my hips are a little tight, which is no surprise. So I'm gonna do some hip cars. CAR stands for Controlled Articulated Rotation. So aiming to maintain a neutral pelvis, we're going to brace into the core gently. So we just want to maintain stability, not like full on brace. You're going to pull one knee up until it's parallel to the ground. You're going to abduct away from the midline of the body. Bring it around town. And that's a hip car. This one feels way better than the other side. Oh yeah, that feels way better. There's a little bit of tightness in my groin, but I think that's just my adductors. After a couple of warm-up sets, we're gonna get into the working sets. I've got three sets of 12, and on the last set, a drop set. Since I tend to have really tight hamstrings, and this can add some tightness to it, which I don't want in my squat pattern, 
because it can pull the lower lumbar, stretch the lower lumbar, and I get really freaked out about my back. Um, I take a little time in between my working sets to continue stretching them. Time for a drop set. No more pussy floating around. Locked and loaded. just to prove we're not little bitches. Stay, stay strong, my army of meatheadettes. Oh, I'm flirting with a hamstring cramp. Okay. Okie dokie. Wipe down your gym equipment, you nasties. I've fully developed this new phobia that I'm going to get pink eye. Um, I just feel like it's lurking behind every corner waiting for me when I'm least suspecting it and it's going to just infect me and ruin my life. <clears throat> also, I just remembered I keep accidentally taking these bright yellow towels that my gym has from one location because I do my fasted cardio at a different location in the morning and I keep accidentally taking the towels because I'm just doo -doo, like no brain function. I have, I'm, I'm firing on maybe two cylinders and one of them's broken. You know what I mean? And I've decided that what I'm going to do is just return them at a different location where I lift. And maybe one day I'll have taken all the towels from my fast and cardio location and they will all be relocated to one, the other locations. I never gave you a fitty fitty fit check, but knee sleeves are Havico, of course, as are the shorts. If my ass is fat, let the shorts do the talking. And this is a Paragon top. I love these little, to me, they're like in my head, they're vests because I think British people call tank tops vests. I might have made that up. Oh, maybe they call, no, they call sweaters jumpers. I don't know, it just, it screams vests to me. Bit of a confession here, guys, I peed my pants. Not just now, but on Monday, while I was doing rack pulls, uh, I experienced a little bit of urinary stress and incontinence, and so now, I'm freaked out. So, I just went pee. I might piss my pants again. I'm changing my handle to Ms. Pee Pee Pants Official. <clears throat> So if you know anything about why that happens, basically, should we talk about abdominal structure? Okay, you're built like a barrel, right? You've got your abs, the visible abs. You've got your obliques, and those are like external, right? Those are the, the walls of the barrel. At the top, we've got the diaphragm, which is where we brace. We create that intra-abdominal pressure by pushing out against the front of our bodies and out against the side of the rib cage. And that's what prevents us from crumpling while we're doing a compound lift. But at the bottom of the barrel sits the pelvic floor and it should lift up. But sometimes when there's so much pressure in the diaphragm, it pushes down. And guess what that means? The pelvic floor holds up like the bladder and your anus and basically all the stuff down there. And sometimes you just create too much pressure and it pushes on the bladder and out leaks a little bit of pee pee. Now I'm pretty sure that I know why this happened for me because I injured my back, get a little freaked out about it. Anytime I feel it too much, I kind of overbraced. So I have a feeling that that's probably what happened. I probably just pushed a little too much weight, braced a little too hard. Like my body just didn't need that much weight that day. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh well. So basically to fix it, I'm doing a little bit of pelvic floor therapy on myself. And then I'm also Probably going to push a little bit less weight, maybe for a few more reps for a few weeks so that I can be super mindful of my bracing, both intra-abdominally and making sure that I'm lifting on the pelvic floor. Or who knows, maybe I'll just start wearing a pad to the gym. Great news team, I haven't even peed a little bit. So I've just got three working sets of eight here. This is my last one. The last one was hard. So I assume this will also be hard. What is on my shirt? Sweat and makeup. You okay, quads one more. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I started to leak a little. See, 
Cleanliness is next to godliness, and what am I if not a god? No gods, no masters. My gym just got this little Bulgarian split squat thingy. Technically, I'm assigned two sets of 20 walking lunges, but really, when it comes to single leg patterns, it's like tomato, tomato, as long as you're getting a single leg pattern in. It could be a Bulgarian, it could be a walking lunge, it could be a reverse lunge. I mean, they all have like slight differences, but uh, like the point is, get your single leg pattern in. Get, do your uni unilateral work. I don't know if I love it though. Like to rest one minute between legs. That's an old John Meadows thing. I used to run a lot of John Meadows programs. I ran Creeping Death two, like three or four times. I take, I take a lot of my training philosophies from him. What an influential man. You know what's super cool though is that my coach like trained under him, was mentored by him. So it's kind of like cool and in a way like a little bit of a full circle moment for me too because I've already been so heavily influenced by him. Oh, okay, enough of she gushy, let's go. Me having to check my workout program every week even though I've been doing the exact same workouts for literal months, unbelievable. I don't know, I just feel like this roller thing isn't gonna work for me. I just don't feel like I can quite get low enough. And this roller's so big that I feel like my foot's gonna fall off. I'm only a size five and a half, guys. So dainty and delicate. You do you the best, you do you the best. Not that food is a reward, but I do have a red velvet buffin waiting for me. Oh, interesting. One of my old gym members is here, like from the gym that I used to own. Every time I see that happen, I raise an eyebrow. I'm about to be influencer AF with these. So I'm also going to record a vertical tutorial because literally one person asked me to. I'm sure that you're noticing a bit of a theme here, but I've been taking it easy on these lately. Uh, mostly just because my low back is being an absolute little bitch. That was fine-ish. Gosh, it can honestly be so frustrating sometimes working around an injury because it's like, at what point is it fatigue from being on a diet, general muscle soreness from exercise and stuff, or an actual potential for reoccurrence of injury. It's really hard to deduce the difference between those, and I have to admit that I've been erring on the side of caution. But there are other ways to reach full muscle fiber recruitment and true failure on a movement other than just maxing out the load. So that's what I've been focusing on. A lot of people will talk about like, oh, what you did to gain the muscle is how you retain the muscle. Like you have to be continually pushing strength, getting stronger, pushing PRs. And to a degree that's true, but when we look at like what actually causes hypertrophy in, in the literature, it's full muscle fiber recruitment taken to a point of true fatigue and actually not even like full fatigue, but one to three reps shy of failure. And when we talk about failure, it's not just, oh, I can't move the weight anymore. It's I can no longer move the weight with the intended muscle. Now, sometimes you have to get to a point where you do those ugly reps. I've got a decade of ugly reps under my belt proving that. Um, and I was injury free for about a decade. I don't know, do with that information what you will. Don't use that as an excuse to train like a bitch though. If you train like a bitch, you're gonna look like a bitch. I fucking hate this machine with the passion of a thousand burning suns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, spin class is gonna be so fun tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm doing another 5.30 a.m. spin class with my friend. And also, shit talking. Um, because that's what girls do. We yap, shit talk. Spill tea, gossip, but it's like very safe. Like it's just saying between us, you know what I mean? I know you know what I mean. Drop some tea in the comments. Tell me what's going on in your life. Tell me what's going on in your town. Tell me something juicy. Oh Ooh boy, hot diggity dog. Great, Lizzie's. What do I say about cleaning up after yourselves? Um, let's take a moment to reflect, shall we? Do you guys reflect after your workouts? Let me know down below. Um, that was, I sweated a lot. Look at this. It looks like I dribbled on myself. I did get a little bit of makeup on there somehow, uh, but mostly it's just sweat. Like, even my undies are soaked. I don't usually wear undies to the gym because I usually wear 
tight shorts, but these are kind of loose. So I don't know, something about undies just makes me feel a little bit more secure. Cheers to Red 40, Maxin. Here's the, I don't know, I still have conflicted feelings about red velvet because if it's chocolate, why are we making it red? Why can't it just be chocolate? I can for sure say that these are better microwaved, warmed up. The red velvet one specifically, I mean. As far as strength goes, I'm not surprised to see this is on to the reflection portion of the video. I've just been reflecting about red velvet and buffins in general. Turns out that these are made with whey isolate, which is probably why they digest so well for me. And which also makes the recipe just that much further confusing and interesting. Uh, because how? How is it not just totally dry and disgusting? A marvel of modern science, truly. Ah, uh, yes, reflecting. Me reflecting on myself, reflecting about red velvet instead of reflecting on the workout because I just keep eating the buffin instead of reflecting. The workout went well. Is it the strongest workout I ever had? No. Did I push a failure on everything? Almost. The exception being my RDLs because my low back is just feeling some type of way. I didn't realize how tight it was until I went and are they on this side? Yeah, I had a massage yesterday. I didn't realize how tender my low back was until like at the very beginning, he goes down like from the neck to the low back. And as soon as he got to my spinal erectors, I was like, holy shit. Like they were tender to the touch. I had no idea. Not that it's a good indicator of an effective hypertrophy workout, but I walked out of here like shaking, like my knees my legs are still a little shaky. My hands are still a little shaky. Um, and I know that it's not necessarily because I burned all the energy because I'm still sipping on my intro workout with the carbs, with the lemonade. I'm eating, what, 30 grams of carbs here, 36, something like that. What, 24 in my rice cakes? So I don't think it's necessarily lack of energy. Smash that like button if you think the muffin top's the best part. Oh, you do think it's the best part, don't you? So why do you hate your own muffin top so much? Haha, <laughs> gotcha. Oh, it's 28 carbs. I lied. I just looked. 28. Oh yeah, I was reflecting on my workout. Did I catch pink eye today? Maybe. We'll find out. I did wash my hands before eating this buffin. I did not touch my eyes, so I'm not really sure how I would contract pink eye. Nonetheless, I think I might. Mmm, buffin muncher. Well, that about wraps it up. I know that I've said it before, but I only have one leg day a week. Kind of max out my lower body at like proportion wise. Oftentimes when you hear a competitor not in bikini, but when you hear a non-bikini competitor talk about maxing out a body part or muscle group, it's in it's relative to themselves. So my legs are not like I, eventually I will be able to grow my legs again, and I'll push my leg days harder. But I need my upper body to start being a little overpowering because right now my lower body overpowers my upper body, and I don't want to give wellness proportions because I'm not a wellness girly. So I take it easy on my leg days. I say as I talk about walking out shaking. Um, okay. I love you. Go forth, train hard, be nice to each other, eat your protein, eat some fruits and veggies, drink your water, get some good rest. I love you. Bye.